او پیزیتی هوا باشم یه هوا شای باشم رکا اکوا داش دبران استری اپاسیز نه اوریز او گوه ایم میلستون انشالا و هم تیری لیتی در نیشن ایز ویل I want to make a point on um, this kingdom and proving that this kingdom is actually indeed wicked, man. Right? And I'm going to use Matthew the fourth chapter to make this. I'm going to use Matthew the fourth chapter to make this, um, this point. This is Matthew chapter four and verse. I'll start at verse seven. Yahweh Shai said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt. The Lord Yahweh, thy power, all right? Yahweh shall I say, said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt Yahweh, thy power. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me, all right? So if you understand that point, man, <clears throat> if you understand that point, you would have to understand that. You'd have to understand that if Yahweh Shai would have agreed to that, which he wouldn't anyway, of course we know that he wouldn't. But if he would have agreed to that, he would have been in charge of this kingdom. And he would have ended up losing the kingdom that he was offered. But he would have been in charge of this kingdom. So what does that tell you about this kingdom that we're in right now? He would have been in charge of this kingdom right now. And he would have been in charge of all the other kingdoms prior to this, right? Yet he would have ended up giving up on his own kingdom. You see? Verse 10. Then say if Yahweh shall unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. Right? But let's just say that he would have agreed to that, which we again we know he wouldn't have, right? Because he's too righteous to do something so sinister as that, man. But he would have been in charge of this kingdom. So what does that let you know? That lets you know that this kingdom that we're in right now is wicked, right? And Yahweh Shai already knew that he had a particular particular role that he was supposed to fulfill in his time in his life when he was when he was living, man. As Yahweh Shai. Now let me read. Let me go to a few points. This is Isaiah chapter fifty-three and verse five. But he was wounded for our transgressions; he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So Yahweh Shai knew that he came to give up his life for the Israelites, man. And he was continually being strengthened day in and day out by that fact, right? He knew that he had a mission to fulfill. So he wasn't going to give in to Satan, but if he would have, which again, I have to say, he would not have did that. But he would, if he would have, he, which again, I'm going to say it again, we know he would not have did that. He would have been in charge of this current society that we're in right now, where there's the whole UN and all that. So that lets you know that this kingdom is wicked, right? This is not the kingdom of heaven. So if you're established, in fact, this is the worst kingdom of all time. This is the most wicked kingdom of all time, because this is the only kingdom that things are going to get so bad on earth that you're going to have to be all the people that Yahweh loves and wants to protect him that they are going to be taken away from the earth. That's never happened before. During the time of Noah's Ark, people were still on earth, even though they were on an ark. They were still technically on earth, man. But in the time to come, the Israelites are not going to be on earth. They're going to be taken up out of, away from here, man, for a time. They're going to be taken up and away from here. You see? So it lets you know that it lets you know that um, what's coming is going to be terrible, man. It's going to be terrible. This is Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Yahweh rather than men. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, who be slew and hanged on a tree. Him of Yahweh exalt with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So Yahweh Shai knew that he wasn't to give himself over to this kingdom, because he already knew. That he had a kingdom waiting for him anyway, which let me get that. He he before he was born on this earth, he he had a kingdom promised to him. Luke chapter one and verse thirty one, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. He shall be great 
and shall be called the son of the highest. And, Yah and the Lord Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Right, so Yahweh Shai's kingdom is an endless kingdom. Anyway, now let's go to this. Yahweh Shai already knew that he had a kingdom promised to him. So he had no need to give in to this kingdom. Just like how the elected the nation of Israel, we know that we've got a kingdom coming to us that we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was the first born among brethren that fulfilled this task of giving his life over so that he can receive. You know what? In fact, I'm going to let the scriptures do the talking on that point. I'll say that after what, what point afterwards. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the cloud of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, right? And they was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, right? So Yahweh sure already knew that he had a kingdom coming to him anyway, so he had no need to give in. And giving over to Satan, man. He had no need to accept the kingdom that we're living in right now. Because he knew that he already had a kingdom coming to him. That was going to be an everlasting kingdom. That was going to be a righteous kingdom. He, 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 he knew and saw far ahead of the future. Even further than that, man. He had the vision to see what he was really fighting for. Just like how the elect to the nation of Israel have the vision to see what they're really fighting for. So they ain't going to be having... Like a record deal in this world, man. They ain't going to be having all the things that this world offers. They're going to see further than this, man. So they ain't going to be looking like they got no flashy lifestyles. People will call them bums or whatever. But some of the people that call them bums have actually got equal amounts of money or less. So it's funny. It's funny that J Jake's are saying that. It's funny that these Israelites talk all this bum talk as if we ain't Israelites ourselves. And I mean these wicked Israelites that don't even accept that they're Israelites. It's funny how they say all these bums and this and bum that. But as if we don't understand the struggle of our people anyway. And we don't understand that when these people are trying to make it like they're balling, that they're really fronting, man. And that they ain't really got no money like that themselves. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 14. And there was given and there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So Yahweh Shah already knew that he had an everlasting kingdom. But he already knew that when he when Satan tried to come to him, he knew that that kingdom was not te was was temporary anyway. It was a temporary kingdom. So why would he have gave in to that? Right now, let me get this scripture. Because Yahweh Shah already knew. Yahweh Shah has already received some heavenly things now, man. He's, got, he's just waiting to come and claim them. It's, he's, he's received it all already. But we, we're next to try and go through what we have to go through to be perfected. Yahweh Shai has already finished everything that he needed to do to where he can say it's finished. Right? But we've got to do all the things that we got to do in order to be like feel like we redeemed to where we can say, okay, it's finished for us too. So we've still got to escape and not receive a karagma. That's our challenge. That's our test ultimately to not take that karagma, man. And they're going to make anything to try and make us want to take that. They're going to try their best, man. Because what, what's on the line is something that they could never receive, man. They've got their telescopes that they'll be looking out into the heavens and seeing certain things. And they already know really deep down, man, that they can't receive that stuff. And that's why they're out deceiving us, trying to pretend as though they've got some long time plans in the heavens. No, you haven't, man. You're just really worried about and focused about things on the earth and you don't even know how to live in that way, man, which is the reason why you look the way that you do and the reason why you die the way that you die, man. Your Edomites are not really skilled like what you think you are, no matter how how proud you talk out of your mouths. This is Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy. In fact, let me go up. Revelation 5 and verse 8. And when he had taken a book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, which the Lamb is Yahweh Shai, having every one of them having every one of them harps and vials. Excuse me, and ha having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, 
which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations. So that's talking about all the elect, right? Yahweh Shai knew when he came to the earth that he had to die, right? But he's did that now already, which is the reason why he said it's finished, man. And he already rebuked and didn't want to receive none of these kingdoms. All these kingdoms that the Israelites, after he died, had lived through, right? But he already knew not to receive them. But if he would have received it, which again, I'm going to say, he wouldn't have did that. This would have been one of the kingdoms that he would have been ruling in, man. Which shows that this kingdom is not the kingdom of heaven, man. It's not. This is actually the most disgusting kingdom of all time. This is the worst one. Which is why it's going to receive the worst judgment, man. Yahweh Shai is going to come out of the heavens to rebuke this place in and in, in righteousness he's going to judge and make war with this place as it says in the scriptures verse 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth meaning we ain't going to be floating around in the heavens on some angels wings no we're going to get a kingdom that we're going to be living on the earth man and we're going to be man we're going to be something that we no one ain't ever seen before man like what we can imagine in our mind doesn't even compare to what actually is really going to be, man. What we're really actually going to be don't even compare. Verse 11. And I, be, and I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels around about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, saying with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power. So Yahweh Shai knew that he had to go through a particular task in order to receive the things that Yahweh had wanted to give unto him. He knew. And that's why he prayed so hard that time to where he bled, man. That's why he was so willing to go through what he went through. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the lamb, worthy is Yahweh Shai that was slain. To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Right? So Yahweh Shai is going to receive all of these things, man. He's received them. He's just waiting to come to the earth to get these things, man. And guess what? The time's going to come where we're going to have to show whether we're worthy to receive power. And riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and the blessings, right? Which the blessings is going to ultimately come through being in the new covenant, right? To where we keep all the laws and therefore Yahweh is going to give us the blessing parts of the covenant and no longer give us the curses. But I'm going to end the lesson there, man. Like Yahweh Shai, if Yahweh Shai would have sold out, which we know he wouldn't have. He would have been in charge of this wicked kingdom that we're living in right now, man. Which is a point to prove that this place is not even close to being the kingdom of heaven. All praises to Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. Shalom.